Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today I wanted to do some watercolor techniques. I wanted to just go over some of the things. Um, when I was getting started in watercolor, these are some of the things I did to get better at some of my short-term and long-term goals, and I want to share some of those with you. Some of them may seem like, oh, okay, yeah, I've heard that before, and some of them may be new and different. So they're kind of going to be all over the place, but I want you to know that if you have a question about something specific, painting something, creating something, please put it in the comment section below. I have no problem making an entire video to try and help you because I figure if you have that question, odds are really good that other people have that question too. So one of the common things I get asked is about skin tone. How do you make a really, really good skin tone if you're not buying convenience colors, if you're doing a no-buy, if everything you do just seems a little bit off? And this is my tip and my trick. I match to mine. I match to my skin tone because if I don't match to mine, I go too light and I go too pink. So skin tone is a combination of when you're doing acrylic paint. It's the three primary colors in very tiny amounts and then a, a ton of white to get my skin tone. You would use less white for a darker tone, for a dark, deeper shade. Now for watercolor, I tend to water it down and I actually start a little bit. So I will add some water to one of these wells and I will show you how I do this. So here's one of my wells and I start with brown. I start with Let's find a color that most people have in their sets because I don't want to go too niche. So let's do um, Burnt Umber. So here is my Burnt Umber. And I start with brown because it's easier to start that way. And what I do, and you, as you're getting started, as you're being introduced to watercolor, as you're experimenting, you're going to have a lot of trial and error. Pick up a piece of watercolor paper that you don't mind experimenting on and keep testing. Now you don't have to use burnt umber, you can use coffee grounds, you can use anything you want to sort of create the things you're interested in, however you get there, especially if it's just for a sketchbook and you're just starting. So when I look at that, I think it needs a little bit more pink. So I am just going to add a little bit of Scarlet Red. My Scarlet Red in this set, this is the Schmenka Hudrum Aquarell. It is very, very opaque. It helps to really know and understand your products. I don't need very much of it on my brush. This is one of the more opaque colors in the set. That is a good skin tone for me. Now, when you're painting a portrait, what makes a portrait come to life is the depth. And to create depth, you must have shadow and you must have highlight. So you can take a portion of this, move it over, water it down, and then you have a highlight color you can take a portion of this, move it over, add infinitely more brown. Here, let me do this a fast way. I will link this sort of, it's like a pipette that holds a fluid ounce. It just makes everything quicker. I'll link that product and I add more brown and I'll make it darker. That is my shadow. So here is my shadow. Here is my mid range. Here would be my highlight for the face. And those would be my three sort of skin tone colors for doing a portrait. Now, if you don't have a burnt umber, you don't have a brown, um, we can do the primary. So let's do that. And I kind of have this taped, but let me show you. So I will just add a little bit the scarlet and that's I can tell you already that's way too much 
So I'm going to move that over. Again, the red is very, very powerful. I will add, this is Cabium Yellow Light. And then I need a blue. What's a good blue everybody has? We can do um, Ultramarine Finest, and that one is right here. All right, so I'm, I'm making sort of, when you mix the three primary colors together, you get a brown. Again, I warned you about that red. That red is unreal how opaque it is. But, you just keep going and keep mixing. This is a practice. This is how you get good at mixing colors and making colors. And understand that some people have cool undertone skin, some people have warm undertone skin. And there is a warm red, a cool red, a warm yellow, a cool yellow, a warm blue, a cool blue. Remember, we talked about those. I will link some of my color theory. So here is a color I made using the primary colors, and I'm gonna water this down and thin it out. And we are gonna see what kind of skin tone I made. I might have watered that down a little too much. It is pale, but it is there. So, I can add a little more red. I can add a little more blue. I can add a bit more yellow. That looks a little too yellow. It's just, you keep going. Just keep going, don't give up. This is how you mix and make colors. It's all practice. It's all practice. And I'm using ones of differing levels of the spectrum. I'm not mad at that actually. That's not bad. That's really pretty. Um, this would make great cheek highlights under the chin. When you're looking at a portrait of a picture, and I'm just gonna get out one of my sketchbooks. When you're looking at a portrait of a picture and you're trying to figure out what colors were used and identified, I make a viewfinder. This is just a piece of watercolor paper where I cut a square out of the center and I hold it over so I can identify. Okay, that looks really, really, really dark brown. That's either an umber with black that could be a sepia, and I move this around. This is something I make when I'm starting out trying to figure out how to identify different colors. It helps to have a little viewfinder. Not all of us have empty slides, um, so this is just one way that helps. Because I wanna look at this and be like, okay, is this a warm gray? Is this a cool gray? Does this gray have blue undertones? Does it have yellow undertones? Does it have red undertones? This is how you get comfortable figuring out color and mixing. The other thing is shape. So when I go to look, if I'm using a photo reference, I look at shape. So this looks like an egg. This looks like a mini egg. These look like little tiny cylinders. Here we have appointed ovals that come to tips. I look at shape and how shape correlates and relates. Symmetry is a face perfectly symmetrical. Um, I have a video on facial proportions if that is something you are interested in. Tips and tricks on how to do that. But to identify color, a, making a small little viewfinder, and this is just from watercolor paper because it's thicker and it lasts longer. This is a really huge help. Now, if you're trying to paint and create pictures and you're having trouble with lines blending and bleeding, feather things out. Keep experimenting so you don't get hard lines. And this is what I do when I go to blend in another picture and I want it to look seamless. I just keep pulling out the water I'm using and then I will add a new color to it. Especially if I'm doing like a wet on wet, if you want a very variegated sort of type of blend. And I'm gonna link in the comment section some really fun watercolor techniques using different resists, using tissue paper, using cling film, some of the most more unusual ones but with watercolor, when you're first starting, you want things to look like this. 
you want to trial and error. If you're doing pet portraits and you're trying to match fur, keep in mind that if you're using a reference photo to create, that photo, if you're just starting out, needs to be frame quality. What I'm saying is if that isn't a picture you would use to frame on your wall, that is not a good reference photo for trying to duplicate and replicate for, for a painting. Because if it's a little blurry, if it's the subject matter's farther away in the distance, that is a lot of fine-tuned detail you're going to have to make up and imagine. And if you're not familiar with the person's moles, freckles, laugh lines, dimples, three o'clock shadow, pores, um, anything you're trying to recreate, that's going to be much, much harder. So I would say to start out, start out using reference photos. Figure out the shapes of where the face is and sort of that's ovoid, that's cube, that's sphere. Figure out how they are in relation to each other. Figure out colors, isolate the colors and look and see, does that brown have a little blue tint to it? Because some browns are bluer and some browns are redder. And that is another thing that comes with practice. Being able to look at a picture and just go, oh yeah, that's, that definitely has, that's a warm brown, that's a cool brown. And obviously these are very dark and easier to see, but it gets harder. So I hope this video helped a little bit. Leave your questions below, and I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.